Welcome to the Farmish Kind of Life podcast, where we talk about homesteading stuff and life stuff and everything in between. Join me, Amy Dingman, as we explore big questions on a little farm. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Farmish Kind of Life podcast, where I am all about motivating you to live your best life, whether you live on a farm or not. Thank you so much for joining me here for episode 254. Today is October 30th, 2023. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about the monetization of everything and my thoughts on that. But first of all, let me tell you, the temps have definitely dropped here at the farm. Winterish weather has arrived here in central Minnesota. I go out to do chores in the morning and all those waters for the animals are frozen. So we have reached that point of year Uh, I did go out and start the wood stove over the weekend, so that is up and running. And I tell you what, it's going to be a chilly Halloween for trick-or-treaters tomorrow. And I remember being a little girl, and there were a few Halloweens where I had to wear my winter coat over my beautiful costume. And let me tell you, (laughs) there is nothing more distressing than picking out a really cool costume or having a really cool costume, and then your mom telling you you have to wear a winter coat over it. What is with that? It's just terrible. So I hope that uh, Halloween is not too frigidly cold for uh, the trick-or-treaters and celebrators of Halloween this year. Main topic, the monetization of everything. Now, I want to put a disclaimer here before I start this topic. And I've wanted to talk about this topic for a while, but it's tricky because people will hear it all sorts of different ways depending on where you are financially or where you are as a a business person, a small business person or a content creator or a solopreneur or a side hustle person or whatever. Um, So I struggle a little bit with how to bring this up, but here's my disclaimer. This is just my opinion based on things that I see while I'm perusing the world and popping into different communities online. And I hope that you will understand the point that I'm trying to make here. I am not bashing content creators or folks with side hustles or solopreneurs because that would be absolutely hypocritical because I am all of those things. But I'm gonna talk about something that I see in the world today that I think we need to be very careful of, which is the monetization of everything. And I was thinking about this a couple months ago. I remember this because I talked about it in my Telegram group. I was thinking while I was having my cup of coffee in the morning like I always do, and it came up with a very honest but probably inappropriate comparison for the current need to monetize every single thing we do. It feels like, especially in the content creator world, that if you have a thought or you have a word or you have an anything, you should be making money at it. And then we try to make money at it, but we don't make the million dollars that someone told us that we could make. So then we feel that that word or that thought or that whatever isn't worth anything and that we shouldn't even bother with it because why put it out there if it's not for money? You see that slippery slope? You see how that happens? So I'm sitting there with my coffee and I'm thinking about all this. And then what comes to mind is the oldest profession in the world. You know what I'm talking about? And I I got to thinking about just because someone can monetize something doesn't mean you should. And it doesn't mean that if you don't monetize that something, that your version isn't worth something to the people who matter. With the way that the internet connects everything nowadays, with the ease of the selling platforms and the marketing platforms that exist today that did not exist in our parents or our grandparents' day, there's this potential dollar hanging over every single thing. If you have chickens, you can sell eggs. If you have a crochet hook, you can sell hats or scarves or blankets. If you know how to incubate duck eggs, you can sell a course. If you have rabbits, you can sell their manure, right? And on and on and on. I'm not saying don't have a side hustle. I'm saying it is okay to crochet things because you like to make hats for your kids and you have no desire to join the ocean of people who tell you you can pay your mortgage just by selling enough hats or eggs or jams or courses on how to make those items. It's okay if you don't want to do that. Are there people out there making money off of those things? Absolutely. Is it the norm to make enough money off those things to pay all your bills? No, it's not. And I think we have to stop acting like it is. 
We also have to stop acting like the only value in making a hat or a jar of jam or packaging up a dozen eggs is if someone trades you X amount of dollars for it. I think it's okay if you want to make videos for TikTok because you like to make dorky videos for TikTok. And that's the only reason. You just like to make dorky videos, okay? I'm talking about myself here. <laughs> because when money starts to get involved, now you're all about the views. It's not about the video you made. It's about how many views that video got. And now you've created a monster that needs to feed itself. And there's also this thing where if everyone is making money at something, no one is making money at it. And what I mean by that is the whole supply and demand thing that nobody ever wants to talk about. There is only so much time to listen to podcasts. There is only so much time to read books. It was much easier for me to sell a book in 2012 than it is in 2023 because more people are writing books. There are more books out there, which is awesome, but it, we haven't increased our time to read. Do you know what I'm saying? There are only so many people who can buy your eggs, anything you're selling off your farm. There's only so many people. And when more people get into selling that, it doesn't change the amount of people who are available to buy it. And what's more, the crazy thing is that at some point, all this monetizing every little thing that you can changed from, oh, this is cool. I'm making a little money. You know, like ladies back in the day used to say, this is my egg money. I made a little bit of money. It, it changed from that or, oh, I can pay this bill with my egg money or I have a little extra with my egg money to be able to do this thing. It became, you too can be a millionaire by making YouTube videos about hydroponic gardening or doing a speaking tour on how to raise emus. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it turned into, which I find so ironic because for people who are all about simplicity and the simple life and wanting to get back to that, now we also want to be millionaires. Now, now we look at our friends who aren't selling their comfrey or their rabbit manure or whatever, and we say, what, do you hate money? Why aren't you selling that? Would, do you hate money? Now, here's another disclaimer that I'm going to add. I am very blessed to live a life where my husband's income could absolutely support our family. And any money that I have brought to the table has always allowed extra things. It's not needed. It's nice, but it's not needed. But I'm also going to tell you that we intentionally built a life that could be supported on one income. I'm not saying we're rolling in the dough because we're not. I am saying we could survive on one income if we had to. I'm also going to point out here that buying a house in the year 2000, which is when we bought our first house, is totally different than buying a house in 2023. Here's a little history. When my husband and I first got married, we got married in the year 2000, and he made almost $15 an hour, and our mortgage was about $600 a month, a little less than $600, I think. There are young adults today making $17 to $20 an hour who can't find an apartment for less than a grand a month. I looked into this because I have kids, you know, her looking at moving out. And average rent on a no-frills, one-bedroom apartment in our area is a few bucks shy of the mortgage payment on our farm. Let's sit with that for a minute. I also want to point out that regardless of the fact that my husband and I make more money now than we did when we bought this farm 12 years ago, there's no way we would be able to buy this farm if we were buying it today. So income and economics and all of that is a much bigger conversation than what I can dig into in my little podcast episode here. Maybe that is a series we're going to start in the future because we all know the economy right now is crazy, insane, messed up, and it's affecting every damn person. So maybe that's a, a series that we're going to get into about saving money and all of that. But that's the reality of it. My husband and I have said many times, there's no way we could buy this farm today if we were buying this farm today. That blows my mind. I also want to point out that I have friends who are trying their hardest to start new income producing adventures because they want to get out of a super sucky employment situation. And that is awesome, and I really admire them for that, and I really hope that it works out for them. I'm, I'm ecstatic that we have all the platforms we have now that can help people make that a reality. Because 
when you are scrambling for money or you're trying to remedy a really big problem and there are potential dollar signs hanging over everything, that's awesome. You're in a different spot of life than I am currently. And I point that out because I feel like there's a push in a lot of different communities that if you can do it, you should monetize it because that's going to get you so much further ahead in life. Maybe. Depends on what you consider further ahead. And it depends on where you are right now. Like I said, this is a much bigger conversation than I can really get into in a tiny little podcast episode. So stay tuned. (laughs) But when I was working full time, I realized you either trade a lot of your time and you get money or you trade a lot of potential money and get time. And 99% of us will never see both at the same time for any extended amount of time. You either have one one or the other, right? You either have money or you have time. And there is some part of us that wants to believe there's a magic bullet solution for this situation. Like there's some way that you can have enough money to do everything you want to do. And you also have never ending amounts of time to do it with. And we've got people walking around spewing this BS that if you haven't figured out how to do both by now, you obviously suck. (laughs) I know people who are absolutely kicking ass at their side hustles and their businesses they are building, and they are so freaking successful, and most of them don't have two seconds to sit down two days in a row. That is the reality of it. They're waiting for a chance to breathe. I know people who seem to have all the time in the world, and they don't have two dollar bills to rub together most of the time. You generally have one or the other. My opinion is this. We should not be taking every little thing that we can do and love to do and decide that we need to put a dollar amount on it and put it up for sale. We should not be trying to tell every potential YouTuber or blogger or crocheter or homesteader or farm stand runner or CSA runner or whatever that if they just work hard enough at doing all the things, they can have all the things. You can't have all the things. Most of us can't have all the things. Most of us get time or money, and most of us have to choose which one we want more of. When it comes to money, most of us get ahead or make it or whatever by saving money or making money or a little bit of both. And we're always talking about how to make more money, and that's great. But sometimes we need to talk about how to save money. And monetizing every single thing that you do doesn't necessarily get you ahead. Every time you're trying to get ahead, it's a two steps forward, one step back kind of thing. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm saying more people should talk about that. Because monetizing every single thing you do sometimes will leave you scrambling for a life you used to enjoy, but now you've farmed it out to the almighty dollar. How many people have gotten into creative pursuits and then said, yeah, I really used to like making music, but now I hate it because it's my job. Or I used to really love working with vehicles and and working on cars, and now I hate it because it's my job. I just wanted it to be something fun that I did in my free time. I used to love writing books, but I hate it now that I have a deadline. You know, there are people who will say that. I used to love having a garden and growing all the things, and now I hate it because I have to fulfill a certain thing because I have customers. It's not relaxing anymore. Now it's a job. You have to be careful monetizing every single thing that you do. Some people get into homesteading and hope it's going to be that thing that makes them a lot of money for whatever reason, or it gets them famous on YouTube, or it saves the world, whatever. But I just think that we need to say something here. Your homestead doesn't have to be that if you don't want it to be. It doesn't have to make you any money at all. If you don't want it to, that doesn't mean you're a failure. It's okay if your homestead is just your place of peace. And realize I'm using just with air quotes here because it's never just. It's okay if your homestead just adds to your freezer and your pantry shelves and feeds your family and not the entire community and not the entire world. It's okay if it's just for you. It's okay if your homestead just helps you sleep at night. Your homestead is valid even if it's just for you. It is okay if your homestead is just how you make sense of the world or is a place for you to be loved and be safe and just be. That is okay. You can monetize anything you want. You have the ability to do that nowadays. We have the freedom to do that. But it's also okay 
if you don't want to. Those are my thoughts for you this week. I hope it gave you something to think about. If you have any uh, questions or comments about this episode, uh, you can drop me a line at amy at a farmish kind of life dot com. If you have some other financial or money saving or just economy or whatever you want to talk about, if there's something you want to hear about on the podcast coming up in the future, drop me a line and let me know. I think there are some things that we can discuss here to help get us all by. Have an awesome week, you guys, and uh, I will talk to you again soon. Hope you enjoyed the show today. To continue the conversation, visit our website at afarmishkindoflife.com. Find A Farmish Kind of Life on social media or drop me an email at amy at afarmishkindoflife.com. Peace, love, and bacon, y'all. Stay farmish.